Here's our project on a foundation for article space expansion. One of the most common questions that emerge when talking about alien life is why should we care about aliens now? In order to answer that question, let us consider the status quo, where expansion is still nascent and there is low regulations. Projects like OSIRIS-REx and Astroforge demonstrate that early expansion will be in the form of asteroid mining. This is unlikely to lead to discovery of extraterrestrial life, and we deem it more likely that we'll encounter life from extrasolar expansion. If the status quo continues without discussion on ET ethics, early moral intuition might be shaped by for-profit motive. This might cause a stricter race dynamic, thus increasing probability of great power conflict, and would later on influence future paradigm on how we deal with space, which would cause extreme amount of suffering. This paralleled the current situation on factory farming. Hence, we aim to facilitate the development of early perception to make room for the life in our moral compass. In doing so, we'll indirectly impact future legislation and ensure moral treatment of extraterrestrial. Exploration of how ethical theories might answer the question of ET. The answer is slightly complicated because given the earthbound routes where humanity occupies central stage, ethical theory leave areas open for interpretation. The consequentialists might assign moral value to those that have, that have positive consequences, but this depends on how you calculate consequence. Kantian deontologists assign moral value to rationality and this depends on what is rational and what is not, while virtue ethicists assign moral to virtuous being, which also is subjective. Thus, all major view depending on interpretation leads to different implications, which in increasing broadness includes number one, anthropocentrism, two, raciocentrism, three, sentientism, four, biocentrism, and finally, ecocentrism, which said that all ecosystem and or the life within should be valued. These theories aren't without faults. Most of them are practically non-applicable as of now due to problems with definition, such as definition of rationality or sentience. Other than that, there are also practical problems. For instance, very strict anthropocentrism might actually be causing harm to humans because it might increase extras in a dark forest scenario. Biocentrism would also not work without hierarchy. And there is also identific identification problem for all these theories due to divergence. Finally, even the broadest one have some faults. There are questions about where to stop when considering ecosystem. Should we stop at biomes, plants, or entire solar system? Also, there are philosophical arguments about is it okay to do harm for the greater good. In an ecocentric system, killing a species for, to support the ecosystem is bound to happen. Whilst economics is typically an option to muddy the water, we suggest that here it is not. We propose that, with a narrow selection of things to value, the bar to pass to, to enter this selection of things increases, and we have noticed that increasing bars lead to increasing technological requirements. We suppose that this may be due to increased complexity or abstraction relating to narrower groups. Therefore, given the marginal loss of slightly lower value as shown in the graph, it is actually economically beneficial for time-limited agents to choose to get ahead time-wise and select a lower but technologically, technologically testable threshold. Consider that tests for life based on complexity have begun to be formulated, but tests for intelligence as a general concept across perhaps divergent evolutionary systems are still stuck in scientific definition debates. We have included this slide to show comparable legislation which we have drawn inspiration or consideration from but I will not be discussing them due to time constraints. Whilst it may seem that less weight for economics leads to a fairly easy path to application for decisions from our framework, the reality is that the typical problems remain, such as enforcement of the law, avoiding disincentivization, engineering questions about dealing with natural problems, and even some X-risk questions. However, an interesting question is that of the divergence of characteristics of life on different planets. It would seem that this may pose a problem for automated agents in that we may not be able to train them to re, uh, realize what we would consider morally valuable. We then go on to consider some strategies to begin working towards testing this and also consider whether, whether this is actually a problem at all. We recognise that, crucially, our framework has remained a largely academic endeavour and for impact, we accept that we must aim to make it more 
policy relevant? We think there are two options for this. One is to directly interact with those who'd have options on the policy front or particular insights. And the second is to continue attempting to influence academic discourse on this matter, perhaps allowing for space ethics to move slightly more towards the legislative bounds. Both involve reaching out to groups um, which we have come across in our research from trilateral who have posed similar questions and deal with both academic and legislative matters to more traditional space agencies who may hold some of the best resources and advice for continuing this project.